Okay guys, we're gonna change the bearings in the mower deck spindles. I've already done this side and I'll show you when we get over to the workbench as far as like which bearings to buy. They're very cheap. The whole spindle assembly for this is really expensive. They're like $150 a piece for like the cheapest I could find. They come with all, like all of these pulleys as well, but there's nothing wrong with any of that. The only thing this thing needed was the actual bearings themselves, which were like $12.99 on Amazon. The way I do it is I just kind of stack it up the way it came off the best I can. This just pulls right out. Some, it may not be that easy for all of them, but for this one, that's how they came out. And then we're gonna remove these guys right here. And they are half inch. And yes, I am using a chrome socket with an impact. Do not do this at home. All right, so the only part that we need to replace are the actual bearings right here. And it's actually really easy to look these up, what you need, if it's this particular mower or if it's a different mower. And I'll show you, you look right here. I don't know if that's coming through, but these particular bearings, they say 6204 RS. And the RS stands for rubber seal. So all you have to do is just Google 6204 RS and you find your bearings. And I bought four of them, two for each side. And I'm gonna show you how to take them apart. Yeah, so basically instead of spending $300 at minimum replacing the whole spindles, there's nothing wrong with any of the rest of this. So all we're gonna do is pop these bearings out. So I just sit it in the vise just to kind of hold it. I'm not really squeezing it much, just enough to, to hold it firmly. So in the center, there's a spacer that you can kind of move off to one side. As you can see in there, I just moved it off to the side. So now what you can do is you can get something like a socket or preferably a good, good size um, punch or drift or something. And you're gonna try to get it on the other side bearing like that. And you're just gonna punch it out. Just like that. So you get the bearing comes out, and that's the spacer right there. Then you just flip it over to the other side. Same thing, just kind of get it roughly secured and hammer this one out. And you don't even have to like look up, you know, the the mower because if you look up the mower, you're not. I don't think you're going to be able to get a good part number for bearings because they want you to replace the whole thing. And they're not interested in just selling you bearings from you know MTD or any of these kind of places like this. And the other thing about these, so they they put a, a grease fitting on this, so you think, okay, great, I can maintain it. But then they put in a bearing that has a seal on both sides. So if you inject this full of grease, all you're doing is filling up a cavity in here. It's not doing anything to the bearings. So what you wanna do, and these are the new ones. You can see right there, 6204 RS. We got the exact same ones. Now I will say, when I looked these up, they, the old ones I found, they said uh, DRS or 2RS, I think it was. 6204 2RS. So I looked up what that meant. That just means it's a double seal, which is what all of these are. They have a seal on both sides. Um, I'm not really sure. And again, these, these said DRS or 2RS, but when I actually get them, it just says RS. So what you wanna do is take a pick. Mine for some reason has glue all over it. Like a sideways pick and just kinda get in here and pull this seal out. And you can manually put more grease in here because they don't put much in there. I'm not going to worry about it though because I'm just going to leave it off. So you leave the side off that's going to be facing in towards the grease fitting. And then that way, once it's all together, you can just load this thing up with grease. It's going to inject the grease up in here. Once a year when you do your oil change or whatever, 
you can shove some more grease in there. And I don't think you'd ever have to worry about these things ever again. The main reason why they go bad is because you're not, you can't grease them. That's how you do that. There's a bunch of dirt and rust in there. I'm going to just go ahead real quick and clean that out with some PB blaster and a drill with a brush. All right. I just kind of ran through that with some PB blaster. I'll just pull this rag through it a few times. Just get, get the rust out. We don't need rust find its way inside of these new bearings because that's what kills them. The, the rust just gets them all pitted and that's why they make all that noise. So nice and clean. That's ready to go. I'm going to go on the, over on the wire wheel and clean this up too. All right. Nice and clean. So then we take our new bearing with the open side and I'm just sitting it on the, the back anvil part, I guess, if you will, or the, you don't need to like squeeze it for this. And we're going to just put this in here. Now you want to press on the outer race. You do not want to force the inner race in when you put the new bearing in. When you're coming out, it doesn't really matter because it's junk, you're replacing it. So that's why I was hitting it on the inside. Um, going in, you want to do it on the outside. You can theoretically use the old bearing to uh, press it in. In some cases, they just go flush, but with these, they, they actually need to get a little bit countersunk, especially this side. So what I have right here, this is a bearing race and seal driver kit. That's the number for it right there. I've had this for a long time. You also could use a socket. If you can find a socket that fits where it is putting pressure on just the outer race. See, like that one's a little too small. That 30 is a little bit too small. But if you had like a 32 and it fit nicely on over this, you could use that. So see what you've got. Um, this, I have this, so I'm going to use it. And this kind of has, you know, the nut that will, will kind of hold it center. It's not completely coming to the edge, but it's definitely like at least halfway or two thirds of the way over the outside. Um, you can get it started just by tapping it around the edge. But then I'm going to use this to get it all the way in. And these do have like a ledge that you'll, you'll hear it change and it'll stop. So we've got that side in and you see the bearings are exposed on the inside. So when you put grease in there, it'll fill up the entire outer perimeter on the outside of the spacer. This is the next thing. You're going to drop this in because you forget this. It's bad news. You have to do it all over again. So you just set that in there that moves around once it's in. And we're going to take the other new bearing and repeat the procedure. Pop the seal off. This one I thought was flush, but it actually does need to get countersunk slightly. There you go. So that inner uh, spacer should still kind of wiggle around, but it's pretty, pretty snug against, you know, it, it's supposed to be able to move like that, but it's very little space now between the two. That's the way they should be. But these are in nice and smooth. I mean, these are just some Chinese bearings too off of Amazon, but the ones that came out were clearly marked made in China. Well, at one time they were, yeah, China right there. So that is the way you replace bearings and do this job super cheap. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it back on and get everything assembled before I start putting grease in. I'm going to go ahead and put the mower deck all back together. Um, in the last video, I was kind of showing that part. So I'm not going to show you that on this one. 